Hi, and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Lois here, and today um, I'm going to be looking at and comparing three brands of Payne's Grey. I'm only choosing these three because they are the three that I have at the moment. I was interested in this because I discovered that My Marie Blue's Payne Grey, Payne's Grey is a single pigment. Um, I can't remember the pigment number, but I think it's a synthetic permanent indigo that they use for that. So rather than being Payne's Grey, um, the My Marie, I think, is, um, is technically a synthetic indigo. But that's by the by. It's a beautiful, beautiful colour with very good clarity. But what is Payne's Grey? Well, Payne's Grey um, was invented by William Payne in the 18th century. He was an 18th century watercolourist and it's assumed that he was trying to find a mix of colours that would give him a sort of a black um, that was less intense than a pure black. And apparently it was mixed originally from um, iron blue, which I think we call Prussian blue these days, yellow ochre and crimson lake. And apparently it fell out of favour and artists stopped using it in the early 19th century. But now, of course, it's back in favour and it's very widely used along with colours like um, neutral tint. Um, and indigo as a sort of a neutralising element uh, within the watercolourist palette. And of course, as an alternative to black, as its bluish tones make it far less harsh. So my first Payne's Grey is Cotman's Payne's Grey. It's made by Windsor & Newton and it's a student quality paint and it's one that I have used right from the start of my watercolour journey. And I still use it now and really like it. Um, the information about colour is on the back and um, it's made up of pigment numbers PBK7, PB29 and PB15, which is thalo blue, ultramarine blue and carbon black. So the next one is one that I've just recently begun to use, which is Windsor & Newton's um, Artist Quality Payne's Grey. And um, it's, so it's made by the same makers of the Cotman, but it's their artist from their artist quality range. And the pigment numbers here are different, uh, PB15, uh, PBK6 and PV19. So that's Thalo Blue, which is the same as the Cotman, but Quinacridone Violet and Lamp Black. So that's very different from the student quality Windsor & Newton one, which had the ultramarine blue instead of um, the Quin Violet <clears throat> and carbon black instead of lamp black. So let's have a look at this third one, which is Jackson's own, ray, own brand of Payne's Grey. It's an artist's quality paint and the pigment numbers are PBK7, PV19, that's the same as um, the Windsor & Newton, and PB15, that's the same as the other two. So PB15, or phthalo blue, seems to be the common denominator, but the Jackson's one has quinacridone violet, the same as the Windsor & Newton, but it has carbon black, the same as the Cotman. And seeing as we know that the Mimary Blue is a single pigment, uh, Payne's Grey, which is made from synthetic um, indigo, I would be willing to place a small wager on the fact that most brands have will have slight differences, even if they do have similarities. It will be down to this sort of the house preference for the shade um, that they like the best as to what their Payne's Grey contains, which I think is really interesting. So I'm going to swatch them out now, but just before I do, um, I'm going to um, tell you a quote that I absolutely love from the wonderful American watercolourist, Joel Papadix. And he says, words to the effect of that Payne's Grey isn't a colour, it's a concept. And I think he may be spot on there. So let's swatch these out, starting from the same one that I started with before, which is the Cotman Payne's Grey. Um, I've mixed up a, a nice dark value to start with and I'm just allowing the paint to run out on the brush as I swatch these colours out. Now we've got sort of more or less what we would imagine here, um, a nice dark value grey that's almost a black but not quite as solid as that 
you can see as I add a little bit more water, it gets lighter and lighter. We've got a nice mid value um, greys and we've got some nice light greys. And if I do a big sort of messy washy blob at the bottom of each of these, hopefully by the time it dries, we will get some of that beautiful sort of those bluish hints and tints so beloved of watercolorists. So that's Winsor & Newton's student quality Cotman Payne's Grey. Now for Winsor & Newton's artist quality Payne's Grey. And it's going on nice and dark, a lovely dark value, but I don't know whether you can see in this light, it's a lot bluer. It is much closer um, to an indigo, but a very dark indigo. And I would imagine that the makers of um, Mimery Blue or the developers of Mimery Blue Payne's Grey probably had this in mind when they decided to use synthetic indigo for their Payne's Grey so they could keep it as a much purer, cleaner um, mixing um, single pigment colour. When you get more than one pigment number in a paint, it can tend towards the muddy. And I think this is why some people um, veer away from Payne's Grey and um, tend to use neutral tint because it can be a bit muddy. So if you're one of those people, you may want to, <clears throat> excuse me, try out a tube of Mimery Blue. I think I'll be interested in getting some at some point. So finally, the Jacksons. Let's see what this is like. That looks less blue at this stage, but of course we need to leave all these swatches to dry completely because there is always that drying shift. Everything always dries back a lot lighter. And in my experience, those sort of strange bluish hints that you get from Payne's Grey often only come through when the paint's completely dry. Again, you can see that um, we've got a good range of values here from this lovely dark sort of blackish bluish grey um, coming down to a nice pale grey that we could take even further if we wanted to. I'd imagine that we could get some almost, almost invisible, really transparent layers and glazes from all of these colours if we wanted. But I must say that looking at the moment before it dries, that the two artist quality ones do look slightly cleaner and um, more sort of translucent, shall we say, than the Cotman. So now I'm going to leave it all to dry and come back and tell you what I think. So here they are, they're dry and I've labelled them and I think it's quite interesting, the subtle differences that are here. The, the one that was bluest in the middle, the Windsor & Newton, looks less blue and more grey, but still with that soft bluish undertone um, than the Cotman, which has got a, a harsher, blacker undertone um, that's on the left. But the one on the right just seems to sort of sit halfway between the two. It's a little bit blacker rather than greyer. And I think that the Quinn Violet's coming through a little more. So I think the cheaper black pigment is coming through more strongly in the Cotman. Um, the, um, the Thalo Blue is probably um, strongest in the Windsor and Newton. And I think the Violet dominates slightly in the Jacksons and I think that's what gives each of these colours the nuance as to the colour which is the sort of more dominant one from the mix of three pigments, the three different pigments that make up each of these Payne's greys. Well I really enjoyed that little bit of analysis and looking at the different colours and also looking back at the history of this um, iconic um, colour Payne's Grey. Um, let me know in the comments if you have a favourite brand of Payne's Grey. I'll be really interested to read those and I may well try the Mimery Blue myself at some point. Also let me know in the comments if you're interested in more of this type of videos but with different colours or different themes. Thanks so much um, for watching. Please leave us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Um, and thank you so much to everyone that supports Morgana and I on our Patreon channels. The links for those are in the description below. So if you'd like to support this channel and support Morgana or I, then please follow those links and subscribe. Thanks so much. I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.